Back again for the last segment, everybody, and this is my favorite. This is on fabric. So you should have received an email from Denise yesterday about how much fabric to purchase. But first of all, let's talk about fabric quality. Quality equals cost. So fabric is not cheap either. It's an expensive item for this, um, for the quilting process. So what should determine the quality you buy? Your budget and what you're going to use your quilt for. Um, if a three-year-old is gonna drag it around, you don't need the quality you do if you're going to give it as a wedding present. So I would take and go to a good fabric store and feel the fabric so you feel how thick it is, you feel its stretch in different directions, and then you can judge better when you buy something that is lesser quality. Good fabric in a quilt store is going to be $12, $11, $13 a yard. Um, when you buy lesser quality, the color might not be as fast, it might bleed, it might shrink more or less than other uh, better quality fabrics. So let that be your guide. And again, there are coupons. Uh, there is a fabric recycling store over on Medcalf, and they might have uh, pieces to use. Also, we're not having you buy a lot of fabric. Now, fabric is typically uh, sold by the yard. That's 36 inches here, or half yard, or a third of a yard. We're having you buy a yard and a half, and that will do all the white that you see, including the back on Libby's quilt. And that would be all of the print on my quilt. The rest of it, we're having you buy what's called a fat quarter. Now, here is a strip with the fabric. That's another term to, to learn, capital W-O-F, with the fabric from salvage to salvage, about 42 inches. This is a quarter of a yard of fabric. We are having you buy what's called a fat quarter. So what you see here is it's twice as wide. It's 18 inches instead of nine and half as long. So there is more you can do with this larger area than this strip of fabric. So your fabric requirements are going to be several fat quarters and one for the background and everything that is a yard and a half. So how do you choose fabric? I have a terrible time and I ask for help in the quilt stores and you soon learn which store or which person in the store uh, is willing to be uh, helpful. In your book on, on page 18 first of all we identify what's called the pattern. Now this has a lovely scenic pattern here of birds and leaves. These patterns, this would be considered a large scale pattern, maybe a medium and a small scale pattern. Mixing these up in your choices gives you a more interesting quilt. The other thing to consider, and it's talked about on the next page, is what's called value. And that's the lightness or darkness of the fabric. So here's a series of fabrics. And the cool way we have today to tell this is to take a black and white photo with your iPhone or your phone. And those will read light, this will read dark, that will read medium. So this is the value, the lightness or the darkness, the white to the black, if you will. And having a mixture of those in your quilt adds interest to the quilt. Color, buy what you like. We all have favorite colors. In fact, Libby's uh, pink one, she had just finished a pastel quilt and she wanted to use some leftover fabric. So she made hers out of a variety of, of pink fabrics. If we would look at this black and white, this would read dark. This would probably read uh, light, and this would read more of a medium. So consider those things when you're purchasing your fabric. Um, because I have trouble, I started out doing what's called finding a focus fabric. And so here's the fabric as my 
border with all the colors. And then I picked out three of those, the gold, the black, and the red, to use in the quilt. Now this is just a small three and a half inch rail fence used this way and this way and this way and this way all across uh, the quilt. So a very simple block makes an interesting pattern when we get done. So a focus fabric is one way and your book talks about that also in that same chapter. My example of a quilt using the focus, focus fabric. What was the main color in here? I thought red and yellow. So those are the ones I picked. Accent here of green. So that's an easy way to do it. Another way to do it is designers design fabrics that go, if you will, together in the same line. All of these are from the same fabric line. So they all will look good together. That makes it easy. So let's pick a large scale print. Let's pick a small scale that's uh, dark. And then let's pick a middle scale that is um, a middle scale uh, pattern. Or maybe we like this one better. I wouldn't pick these three because they're going to read the same and they're going to look less interesting to me. Um, with your main fabric here. So have fun. Um, as I say, it's both frustrating to me and fun for me to, uh, to choose fabrics. Now, then the last thing is, what are you going to do with your fabric to prepare it? And your book has a lot to say about that. Do you wash it or don't you wash it? There are two different schools of thought, and I'll let you read those from your book. If you're going to wash it, wash it all. Wash your lights separately from your darks. And if you have dark reds and dark blues or blacks, especially if it's lesser quality fabric, you ought to be using something like a color catcher or retain as another. And I think your book even talks about using a vinegar and water mixture. So you're going to wash your fabric or not, and then you're going to press it, iron it, and then you're finally going to straighten it like we showed you today for the next class. So when you come, tune in for your next class, we will be ready to cut your parts of your blocks and sew your blocks together using your rotary cutter and your scant quarter inch seam. So have fun with your practice and buying your fabrics, and we'll see you next time.